Constitutional Convention into the 19th century, slavery caused considerable political controversy in the United States and threatened the very existence of the Young Republic. A need for compromise on the issue arose in the late 1810s. Missouri had applied for statehood in 1817, and in 1819, Congress was prepared to pass legislation allowing Missouri to draft a state constitution when New York Representative James Talmadge added an anti-slavery amendment to the bill. Talmadge's amendment passed the House, where the North held more seats, but did not pass the Senate, where the states were evenly divided. Congress did not resolve the debate over Missouri until it reconvened in December 1819. During the congressional recess, the Senate passed a bill permitting Maine to enter the Union as a free state and allowing Missouri to enter as a slave state. Additionally, Illinois Senator Jesse B. Thomas added an amendment preventing the spread of slavery in the Louisiana Purchase north of Missouri. The bill passed both houses on March 3, 1820 with the help of Kentucky Senator Henry Clay. This Missouri Compromise helped maintain the balance of free and slave states in the Union. Maine became a state on March 15, 1820, and Missouri finally joined the Union on August 10, 1821. Its admission delayed because of provision in its state constitution that infringed upon the rights of African Americans and mixed race people. The Missouri Compromise was not a permanent fix, however. Tensions between pro- and anti-slavery factions came to a head again nearly 30 years later. Texas entered the Union as a slave state in 1845, and three years later, the United States gained extensive territories from Mexico following the Mexican-American War. When California petitioned for statehood as a free state in December 1849, the question of how to manage the spread of slavery reemerged. Early compromise attempts failed. President Zachary Taylor prevented the passing of any legislation regarding slavery, choosing instead to leave the matter to the judicial branch. Nevertheless, circumstances changed when Taylor died late in the summer of 1850 and Millard Fillmore took office. This gave Kentucky Senator Henry Clay the opportunity to try to appease both sides with the Compromise of 1850, which admitted California as a free state, established New Mexico and Utah as territories with the right to determine whether to allow slavery through popular sovereignty, passed the Fugitive Slave Act, which forced the federal government to capture runaway slaves, and abolished the slave trade in Washington, D.C. Through the Compromise of 1850, Texas also ceded its claim to sections of the New Mexico Territory in return for the U.S. government paying Texas's $10 million war debt. The Compromise of 1850 went into effect in September. Utah and New Mexico ultimately both voted to permit slavery. And even in free California, many of its elected representatives were pro-slavery. Thus, like the Missouri Compromise, the Compromise of 1850 was only a temporary fix, merely delaying for another decade the ultimate reckoning over slavery. Future use of popular sovereignty would fail dramatically in the Kansas Territory. At the same time, the passage of the Fugitive Slave Act infuriated Northerners and further fueled anti-slavery sentiments.